So before I get into this video, I'm going to assume that you guys understand the demand curve, supply curve, price and quantity and have a general understanding of this graph. And if not, I'm going to put a link in the description to a video where I explain the basics, general, you know, analysis behind this graph and what it, what it all means. So today we're going to look at the equilibrium point right here, labeled E. This is our equilibrium. And what we mean by equilibrium, it's the point where the market forces are balanced in such a way that this is where we're going to end up in the long run. As you can see, it's where demand and supply are equal. And at this point, producers and consumers have no incentive to deviate from here. We're going to demonstrate exactly why this is the case by looking at examples where we're not at E throughout the video. And another important point to remember is this is absent of any external factors or any shocks. So in order to understand why we end up at this point here, our equilibrium, I'm going to look at the case or the cases of where we are not at this point. So that, for example, might be up here or down here. So we're going to start off by looking at when we're up here and the price is much higher than our equilibrium. So let's start here at this price, which corresponds to this quantity supplied, QS, and this quantity demanded, QD, which is this price here. As we can see in this situation, the quantity supplied is much greater than the quantity demanded. This means that we're in a position that we're going to call excess supply. What is occurring when we're, you know, in a position of excess supply in the market is that there is too much of the good on the market and not enough demand. So in other words, producers have produced too much of the good and not enough people want to buy it. So in this case, we'll call this area here our excess supply. Excess supply. What happens when there's too much of a good on the market and not enough people want to buy it? Well, in order to get rid of this excess supply, the producers have to lower the price in order to increase demand and get rid of this excess supply of the good that they have. They need to increase demand in some way. And so what they do is they lower the price of the good. So what happens when we're in excess supply is that the forces start to work in such a way where our price starts to get pushed down here because our price is now falling because the producers have to reduce the price in order to increase demand and get rid of all this excess supply that's on the market. So we now have forces pushing us down. So we know that we're not going to end up in a stable position here where the price is much higher than our point here. So now we know why we're not going to be in a stable position when we are up here and our price is higher up here than the equilibrium point, because in that case, we're going to be in excess supply and forces are going to push the price down. So now let's look at the situation where we're not at our equilibrium, but instead of being up here, we're down here. So our price is here, which corresponds to this quantity demanded and this quantity supplied. As we can see, when the price is low here, that the quantity demanded is much higher than the quantity supplied. So QD, or quantity demanded, exceeds quantity supplied. So in this case, we are in a situation we call excess demand, the complete opposite of the situation where we were in excess supply. So when we're in excess demand, what's happening is too many people want to buy the good. The price is so low that so many people want to buy the good, but not enough producers want to produce the good because you know they can't sell it for a high price and so on. So in this case, when too many people want it and not enough producers are willing to produce it, we have excess demand, which we're gonna call this area here, excess demand, which we're gonna call it ED. And this should go all the way up to here, these two points here. This is our excess demand. This is the area where 
quantity supplied, quantity demanded exceeds quantity supplied. And this is by how much from here to here. So when too many people want to buy the good and not enough producers are willing to produce it, what happens is the price starts to increase. In order to get rid of this excess demand, this too much demand, the producers start to increase the price. And this reduces the demand, as we knew from the previous video. So what happens is, when we're in excess demand, and when our price is here, much lower than our equilibrium point, the forces then start to push up the price. Because the producers, in an attempt to get rid of this excess demand, start to increase the price. So now we start moving back up here, again, towards our equilibrium point. So now we know why price being here, much lower than our equilibrium, is again unstable. Now that we've looked at the case of excess demand down here, where our price is below the equilibrium point, and excess supply here, where our price is above the equilibrium point, and now that we've understood why both these situations are not stable, we have thus proved that this point here, E, is where our market forces are balanced in such a way that this is where we're going to end up under the natural circumstances and absent of any external factors or shocks. So this is our equilibrium and that is how we end up here.